All right, welcome everyone. My name is Wendy Kamasar, Instructor and Research Specialist at the Howard County Library System Central Branch. Please be aware this webinar is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube page. We're happy to have you with us today for Fueling the Brain, Feeding the Mind, presented by our partners at the Howard County Health Department and Giant Food. June is Brain and Alzheimer's Awareness Month, so we thought this would be an ideal time to present this class to the community. Also, I will include some links to some online resources in the chat box. We are joined today by a special guest presenter, Josefina Heron. She is a registered dietitian, a licensed dietitian nutritionist, and holds a certificate in child and adolescent weight management. Texas born and Florida raised, she received her Bachelor of Science in Dietetics from Florida International University. Josefina is bilingual in English and Spanish and makes nutrition accessible for customers through classes, consults, and store tours. She is passionate about helping others live their best healthy life by meeting them where they are and empowering them to make healthy eating a fun part of their lives. It is so great to have you with us, Josefina. And with that, I will turn it over to you. Thank you all. Thank you, Wendy. I'm super excited to be here today. Um, this is such a great topic and um, thank you all for joining. So today's we are going to um, talk about, today's topic is brain health. And um, like Wendy mentioned, my name is Josefina Hidon, and I am a dietitian, a registered dietitian on the Healthy Living Team at Giant. I'm going to share my seven best tips for promoting and maintaining a healthy brain, as well as my team's card-worthy picks that make it easy. I want you all to take it in, so sit back and relax. At the end, I'll give you a list of all our tips um, and a shopping list. Here's a quick peek at our agenda. Our goal today is for you to know exactly what a brain healthy diet is and how you can easily incorporate it into your daily lifestyle. I want this to be interactive, so feel free to drop your questions in the chat box. Um, and then, you know, make sure to look at that or at the end, um, make sure that I answer all those questions as well as just kind of learn from each other. If you have any comments, um, this is, you know, just a great way for us to also learn from each other. So let's get started. First, what is brain health? We always hear about heart health, weight management, and diabetes prevention, but how do we take care of our brains and why is it important? According to the American Heart Association, three out of five Americans will develop a brain disease in their lifetime by 2030. The total cost of Alzheimer's, dementia, and stroke is expected to exceed one trillion, making um, failing brain health a public health epidemic. And believe it or not, the brain actually begins showing signs of cognitive decline as a person enters their 20s. So we got um, work, you know, we got a lot of work to do. Um, of course, genetics plays a role in our brain health, but there are also many lifestyle factors that contribute to poor brain health too, including um, accidents, medications, um, alcohol, smoking, and other health conditions like stroke, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, and sleeping problems. Um, but our brain is ever-changing, and it's called brain plasticity. And even though our brain shows those signs of cognitive decline, brain plasticity allows our brain to keep working, developing, and learning. As we experience the world, practice habits, and learn new information, our brains change. They grow new connections and repair broken ones. So as we age, our experiences and knowledge help to keep our brains working, developing, and learning. So that's, you know, a really important part, which we'll go into um, as well in the, towards the end of the presentation. 
But for the first tip, I'm going to talk about the mind diet. So following the mind diet, you may have heard of the Mediterranean diet, which um, it's had, has had numerous studies that have shown great health outcome. You may have also heard of the DASH diet, which stands for Dietary Approaches to stop hypertension. Both diets are good for the prevention and treatment of hypertension and heart disease in general. They have an emphasis on fruits, vegetables, and um, whole grains, and lean meats, herbs, and spices, and are low in red meat, added sugars, saturated fats, and salt. They also avoid butter and margin, cheese, fried foods, pastries, and sweets, um, all which are high um, in amounts of trans and saturated fats. So remember, what's good for the heart is also good for the brain. So it's a no-brainer that mind diet is a combination of these two diets, the Mediterranean DASH intervention for neurodegenerative delay. Okay, so that's where mind, it's um, Mediterranean DASH intervention for neurodegenerative neuro delay. Um, so the mind diet also focuses on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean meats, herbs, and spices. Now, this all sounds familiar, and you're, prob you're right. We're describing a balanced diet that is beneficial to everyone. But specific to the MIND diet, berries and leafy greens are of special interest. Um, so as you can see here in this slide, you know, there's a, um, an emphasis on these berries and leafy greens. So berries have flavonoids, which is a type of antioxidant, which is responsible for giving berries those brilliant hues. And research has shown that flavonoids help improve memory. And in one study, women who consumed two or more servings of strawberries and berries each week delayed memory decline up to 2.5 years. And then leafy greens such as kale, spinach, collards, and broccoli are rich in brain healthy nutrients like vitamin K, lutein, folate, and beta carotene. Research suggests that these plant-based foods may help slow cognitive decline. Um, besides berries and leafy greens, there are some nutrients specific to MIND diet that researchers believe may help prevent beta amyloid plaque formation, a potential cause of Alzheimer's disease. So let's talk about them, bringing me to tip number two. So um, tip number two is to incorporate more omega-3s. So these are brain-boosting nutrients. Omega-3s are healthy, unsaturated fats that have been linked to lower blood levels of beta amyloid. Again, the protein that forms damaging clumps in the brains of people with Alzheimer's disease. We often think of seafood when it comes to omega-3s, and for good reason. Seafood is an excellent source, whether it's fresh, frozen, or canned. And fatty fish such as salmon, mackerel, tuna, herring, and sardines are ab abundant sources of omega-3 fatty acids. We want to aim to eat fish at least twice a week, but choose varieties that are low in mercury such as salmon, cod, canned like tuna, and pollock. Um, I know for me, I you know definitely don't get my two a week, but definitely try to start where you are if you can do it once a week or once every two weeks. Um, and just be mindful about trying to include some um, fish um, in your diet. And then trying to make those omega-3s. So here are some fresh frozen or canned options. Um, preparing and cook, cooking fish and seafood can sometimes seem intimidating and time consuming, but it doesn't have to be. Um, tear and eat packages of tuna and salmon make um, eating omega-3s or getting omega-3s onto your plate super easy. They also come in different flavors to add a little pizzazz to your meal. 
There's also brands that have prepared and ready to heat options that take the guesswork out of preparing seafood like sea cuisine. So make it easy to add by choosing um, these healthier prepared meals. And then this like tuna creations already comes with that flavor of hickory smoked. There's some that come with a lemon flavor. So you could really, really just um, be good if you're going on a, you know, camping or, or hiking or just need a quick lunch um, or even a snack. These would make a great snack as well. So here are some um, plant-based options. Um, nuts and seeds such as flaxseed, chia seeds, and walnuts also have omega-3s. Walnuts are high in a type of omega-3 fatty acid called alpha-linoleic acid, which helps lower blood pressure and protects arteries, which is going to be good for your heart and your brain. These little guys are um, pack a powerful nutrition punch, but are also high in calories. So just be mindful of the portion size. Um, plant oils such as flaxseed oil, soybean oil, and canola oil are also sources of, of omega-3 fatty acids. Making some swaps to these oils in your cooking and recipes can help you incorporate more omega-3. Um, so this one here, this um, Tesame Avocado Ranch, let me get my pointer here. This one here, this Tesame Avocado Ranch is made with avocado oil, so you know you're getting omega-3s there. And speaking of avocado oil, of course you can always eat avocados, and it's, it's a great way to promote good brain health too. So now that we know how to incorporate more omega-3s into our diet, we're ready for our next tip on how to promote healthy brain. And that's um, with tip number three. But before I go to tip number three, I want to see if anybody's already using, you know, chia seeds or flax seed. Um, do they, you know, use a variety of, um, you know, avocados, any of your favorites, if you'd like to share. Walnuts. I love to put walnuts um, in my yogurt, um, just to add a little extra protein in it. Also in my oatmeal, sometimes if I have cereal. So I definitely love to use walnuts to add a little extra protein and it's gonna add some omega-3s. If you uh, maybe make a smoothie and you're trying to find a way to add some protein to it, you can make a um, you know, smoothie and add some walnuts as well. Or avocado in your smoothie gives it a really nice silky um, consistency. It's, it's really nice. And I see something here in the chat. Somebody's using chia, ground seed, and flaxseed. That's awesome. The question is how much flaxseed chia, or chia seed um, should we be getting daily? That's a good question. I would have to look that up to see, you know, what, um, how much um, to, to be putting in your diet. I know when I add, you know, chia or flaxseed, for the chia seed, I add um, half a tablespoon because um, it kind of like expands. And then the flax, I usually ju just use one tablespoon. But that's a good question. So tip number three is going to be to add antioxidants. So antioxidants reduce oxidative stress or the imbalance between the production of free radicals and our antioxidant defenses. Prolonged exposure to oxidative stress can cause cell damage, particularly in the brain. So the good news is that recent studies have discovered that antioxidants may reverse some of the symptoms of aging, such as memory loss. And I love this picture because it shows, you know, that you get, we can get antioxidants for a variety of different um, foods. So um, fruits and vegetables are a great source of antioxidants. Fresh, frozen, and canned all counts. So choose what works best for you. 
And remember, we want to pay particular attention to those berries and leafy greens, but there's other fruits and vegetables high in antioxidants as well. Green peppers, tomatoes, and lemons all have a type of flavonoid that has been shown to reduce levels of those beta amyloids. Leafy greens such as kale, spinach, and collards are rich in brain healthy nutrients like vitamin K, lutein, folate, and beta carotene. Um, so my quick tip for produce brain boost, throw a handful or two of green leafy um, of leafy greens in your soups, maybe, you know, those bag salads, smoothies, and pasta for a quick boost of brain food. Um, so this is going to be just be a variety. As you can see, you know, you can do some canned varieties, some fresh, and some frozen. And here we have some shelf sta stable options. Um, you can get also get antioxidants from other sources besides produce. White green and oolong tea and light or medium roast coffees are great sources of brain protecting antioxidants. Wine is another choice. One glass of either red or white wine may benefit the brain, but much of the research has focused on a component found in red wine, which is resveratrol. Res <laughs> Sorry, I always get tongue tied. Um, resveratrol, which may help protect against Alzheimer's disease. Of course, resveratrol is also found in red grapes. So if you're not a wine drinker, you can still get those antioxidant benefits from those red, um, from those grapes, those red grapes. And although wine doesn't have those um, antioxidants, um, although wine does have those antioxidants, the key is moderation in alcohol consumption. That means one serving um, of alcohol for women and two for men. And then I, for, for all those sweet tooth lovers out there, um, I have a sweet tooth, so dark chocolate. Um, dark chocolate contains flavonoids. Is there anybody out there that you know enjoys dark chocolate? Um, so flavon it, dark chocolate contains those flavonoids that help improve memory and cognitive function. Um, the flavonoids inhibit the death of neurons by interfering with free radicals in the brain. So human studies discovered that cacao flavonoids lowered the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease and stroke. Um, so if you see this here, this one has 95% cacao. Um, so you do want to look, you know, to see if, if they're using that dark chocolate. Um, so cacao is where, you know, we're getting that um, chocolate from. And trying, if it's dark, it wants to be, you want it to be at like 55 to, or 60 and higher. Um, it is going to be more bitter the higher it is. Um, and sometimes it is a bit of an acquired taste. I know like the first time I had dark chocolate, it was too bitter for me, but with time, you know, I've, I've gotten a, a taste for it. And they do have some that might have like dried fruit or have like some kind of um, nuts. So, you know, kind of tastes better. And finally, one of my favorites are going to be spices. So spices are very high in antioxidants. Um, so definitely use, you know, um, your spices to season and flavor foods. But at the top of our list, we have clove, ginger, turmeric, oregano, rosemary, and my all-time favorite, cinnamon. Um, so you can sprinkle cinnamon on your peanut butter, oatmeal, coffee, baked goods to add more antioxidants to your day. Anybody have um, any favorite um, antioxidants, um, um, rich foods, any spices that they typically use? Okay, so I'm going to be moving on to our next my nutrient, and that's going to be um, tip number four. It's going to be to follow the choline um, recommendation, the RDA. The RDA stands for Recommended Daily Allowance. 
So research shows that the nutrient choline may fend off cognitive decline in old age. Choline plays a critical role in the creation and release of acetylcholine, which is a protein that carries signals among brain cells and is important for memory and other brain functions. The brains of people with Alzheimer's disease have lower levels of acetylcholine than people without the disease. And the medications used to treat the early stages of the disease work by blocking an enzyme that dismantles acetylcholine. So a team of researchers from Boston University and Howard found that people whose diets included a lot of choline were more likely to do well on the memory and um, cognitive ability test. And MRI scans showed that high choline consumption in the past was associated with healthier brain tissue. So the RDA, which again is the recommended dietary allowance for choline is 550 milligrams for adult men and 425 milligrams for adult women. So the good news is that the typical American gets more than enough choline with consumptions averaging between 700 and 1,000 milligrams a day. So it's important to remember that more isn't necessarily better. There is an upper safe limit. So there is a, you know, we want to make sure we are less than 300, I'm sorry, 3,500 milligrams. So that's going to be the safe upper limit. Large amount of choline can cause low blood pressure, sweating, um, too much saliva, and a fishy body odor. So we want to make sure we eat a balanced diet we're sure to meet our choline needs. So we follow tip number four and stick to the choline um, RDA. Um, we're going to get it from our foods. So here are some examples of what foods are going to be um, good sources of choline. So foods high in choline include animal-based foods like meat, poultry, fish, dairy products, and eggs. Um, keeping the MIND diet in mind, we want to opt for those lean sources of meat and poultry, such as 90% um, lean ground beef, turkey and chicken breast. So look also for low fat or fat-free dairy um, options. And then also cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts are all sources of choline. Keeping a bag of frozen broccoli or cauliflower is a great way to make sure you always have choline and a veggie on hand. Um, I just recently made um, a, a pasta and a, a sauce. And yeah, I used my bag of frozen broccoli and I just added it as just a very simple and easy way to kind of get some veggies and some of those healthy brain foods in my plate. Kidney beans, nuts, seeds, and whole grains are also good sources of choline. So there's many different ways to be able to get choline in our diet. Okay, so for tip number five is to nourish our brains and body with pre and probiotics. Research shows that the gut and brain are connected, a partnership called the gut-brain axis. The two are linked through biochemical signaling between the nervous system in the digestive track called the enteric nervous system and the central nervous system, which includes the brain. It's still too early to determine the exact role of probiotics play in the gut-brain axis since this research is still ongoing. But what we do know is what affects the gut often affects the brain and vice versa. Pre and probiotics support a healthier gut, so naturally they would be good for our brains too. 
So probiotics are those live good bacteria and they are found in fermented foods. So the dairy aisle is a go-to spot for those probiotics, but really you can find probiotics all over the grocery store, from yogurts to drinks like juice, coffee and soda, to cereals and to some snacks like granola and chocolate. You can really can find probiotics um, in different sections. So here you'll see the probiotics and you want to look at the ingredients and see that they have those live active cultures. One that's not here is one of my favorites is kombucha, um, which is a fermented tea. Um, so with kombucha, you know, I had to try different flavors and different brands until I found one that I liked. And yogurt for me, when I first tried it, it wasn't something that I really liked in the beginning, but the same, I tried different flavors, different brands, and now I know, you know, which ones I like. So I definitely, you know, would um, encourage you to try different kinds of, of um, probiotic rich foods. Kimchi is another one um, that's a great, I don't see it here. So kimchi is another one and sauerkraut. And this one, Good Belly, if you are lactose intolerant, this one's a dairy-free um, um, way to get probiotics. This is like a juice drink. And then prebiotics. So you may have heard of probiotics, but what are prebiotics? So prebiotics are simply food for the bacteria. So prebiotics are foods um, are gonna be um, high in fiber, like fruits and vegetables and whole grains. So again, I know, you know, a lot of times as nutritionists, we really push fruits and vegetables. We say half of your plate with fruits and vegetables, half of your plate with produce, but it's just that they have so many different um, benefits. And another benefit here is, is that it's going to be high in fiber and it's going to be that food for those um, prebiotics. I'm sorry, for those probiotics. So some food sources that may be higher in prebiotic include garlic, onions, banana, artichokes, and legumes. If you're looking for more information on gut health, um, you, we have a great podcast and more information on our website. So tip number six is to boost your brain with caffeine. Um, so when brewing, I know a lot of you might, you know, be like really excited about this one, about this tip, but uh, when brewing your morning cup of coffee, not only are you waking up with that caffeine, you may also be boosting your brain health. Um, not only is caffeine a brain stimulant, it also blocks receptors for a chemical called adenosine, which normally prevents the release of excitatory brain chemicals. With adenosine out of the way from your caffeine, these brain sparking chemicals can flow more freely, giving you a surge of energy and potentially improving mental performance and slowing age-related mental decline. Studies also show that compounds in coffee interact with toxic proteins linked to the development of Alzheimer's disease, providing a neuroprotective effect by inhibiting these proteins from forming those disruptive clumps and tangles found in the brains of Alzheimer's patients. So the next time you reach for a cup of tea or coffee, you can tell your brain to thank you later. Um, so we mentioned some great sources of caffeine, coffee, and tea. Um, so here are just, you know, some options. You can get it from um, coffee and tea, but also dark chocolate is another source. Um, and this might sound familiar. If you remember tip number three, these items are also great sources of antioxidants. So it's a win-win. One thing, beware what comes along with your caffeine. Um, coffee, tea, and dark chocolate can come with those added sugars and saturated fats. So be sure to read labels and pay attention to the portion size as well.
And for our final tip, and one that's probably, you know, um, has a lot of information is going to be tip number seven, which means, you know, develop healthy habits. How we eat is just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to brain health. Um, first up, we want to make sure we move more. Exercise, balance, and moving your body can help promote a healthy brain. So aim for 30 minutes a day, but start where you are and gra gradually increase. You can also do them in increments. It doesn't have to be, you know, 30 minutes all at once. You can do um, 10 minutes here and 10 minutes there um, rather than doing it all at once. And if you can do it with a friend, even better, because studies show that being social can also improve our brain health. Not only do you want to exercise your body, you want to exercise your brain as well through mental exercises. So whether it's crossword puzzles, word finds, coloring books, or listening to music, um, reading or having conversations can promote a healthy brain. Next um, would be to reduce the stress in your life. Um, things like meditation is a quick and effective way to reduce anxiety, depression, fatigue, and confusion. Just five to 10 minutes a day can have a huge impact on your mental health. Um, maybe breathing exercises, um, deep, deep breaths um, can also help. Reducing stress can also lead to better sleep which is another important lifestyle factor to good brain health. New research shows that during sleep, the, the brain clears toxins that can lead to Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. So um, trying to have good sleep hygiene, you know, committing to sleeping at the same bedtime each night and turning off electronics at least an hour before hitting the pillow. Um, you know, maybe making sure the room is, is dark, um, putting like um, blinds that are going to be um, dark enough for you to have a good sleep. Um, making sure you know you have a good mattress and pillows. So all of this is really important um, and the temperature in the room as well. And lastly, staying hydrated can also promote good brain health. So drink your water. Great options include um, seltzer water, sparkling water, and flavored water. So here are some Food sources that may help with better sleep as they help with the production of serotonin, our happy hormone that helps to regulate sleep. These foods include lean protein, carb flex, carbohydrates, and those omega-3s, as well as um, celestial seasonings, um, tea, which is a sleepy time tea. This is an herbal tea that helps to promote sleep. And staying hydrated, um, you know, making sure we're getting plenty of water. We want to make sure we have at least those six to eight glasses of water a day. And now that, you know, it's getting um, warmer out, sometimes that might be a little bit more. Um, and if you want to just, you know, switch it up there, you can try like squeezing in some citrus, whether it's um, lemon or lime or oranges, um, maybe infusing your water with um, herbs, could be mint or basil. Um, sometimes I like to add um, cucumbers into my water or fruits. You can do fresh or frozen fruit like strawberries, um, other berries, um, orange, you know, slices. So all of that is just kind of a way to kind of jazz up your water a little bit. Um, and then balance is key. So as you see, you know, um, I'm trying to follow my plate and trying to get as much as we can of half of our plate with fruits and vegetables, uh, you know, a quarter of our plate with those lean proteins um, and those um, a quarter of our plate with those grains, those whole grains. If we're doing the dairy, we want to make sure that it is going to be that low fat or fat free dairy.
Um, to support a healthy brain, we just need to eat balanced. The easiest way um, to eat balanced is by following my plates. And just to um, wrap up for today, here are all of our tips together. I challenge you to start using these as you approach your shopping and eating. Um, so number one, follow the MIND diet. Number two, include more omega-3 rich foods. Tip number three, add those antioxidants. Tip number four, follow the choline um, RDAs. Number five, nourish with pre and probiotics. Tip number six, brain boost with caffeine. And tip number seven, develop those healthy habits. So um, which one of these do you think you can incorporate? That's going to be your challenge. And if you would like to commit to maybe one of these tips, feel free to write it on the chat. Um, you know, when we share um, our goals, a lot of times we commit to them more. Um, when we, you know, say them out loud or when we write them down. So if there's any of these that kind of resonated with you or that you're like, oh man, I want to start incorporating that or including that in my um, diet, um, feel free to put it in the chat and share it with us. And then... The last one is our the mind shopping list. So here are some of the the foods that are that are that I went over. Some of the products we reviewed today. Um, reach out for a PDF of the list, or feel free to grab um a screenshot of this. Um, these are just a handful of options. We do a store tour, which can be helpful to learn more. Or listening to our try something new podcast can introduce you to more um items, new items on the shelf. And then, um, so I will share probably what is one of my um, goals, and it's going to be to include more of those omega threes, more of those omega three rich foods. And then something that I do want to share with you is that at Giant Food, we use two types of icons on our tags that can point the most. Um, um, one of them is the guiding stars and this is best for me so it's a nutrition rating system and it tells you which foods we're going to be higher in vitamins minerals fiber whole grains and omega-3s and be have less um, saturated fat um, sodium and fat and added sugars and then the how good is our impact rating system which is powered by our friends at how good and this is best for we so this is um, going to be a environmental and social impact rating system and if they'll receive one two or three leaves when they are environmentally friendly, minimally processed, and ethically produced. So the more leaves they have, the healthier choice for, for the planet. Um, and has anybody seen any of these at the store, any of these shelf tag labels? If you have, just feel free to put it in the chat. Um, and then here is, you, know, you could also do a screenshot of this. Um, I want to thank you all for joining me today. I hope I was able to make, um, you know, eating and shopping for brain health easier. I hope you learned something new today. Um, but I did want to share how you can connect with our team. We offer a variety of different classes. If you, you know, enjoyed this today, we have other classes at giantfood.com slash nutrition. We also have a Facebook group where we share recipes and a lot of different um, inspiration and ideas on nutrition. That's Healthy Living by Giant and our podcast. So if you're in into um, listening to podcasts, we have our podcast, which is actually has a new, the new name of Healthy Living um, by Giant. So the podcast is the same name as our Facebook. So thank you again. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was fantastic. I didn't realize how, uh, how much spices make a difference. So I definitely want to increase that. That's so yeah. easy to do. 
Yeah, spices do. It's pretty incredible how much antioxidants they have. Some of them have more than than um, fruits and vegetables. Yeah. yeah. So, so easy, so easy to incorporate. Yeah, and diet. that's why cinnamon is is one of my super favorite. I know. I love cinnamon. I'm excited. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, sure. Last chance for any questions out there. Anyone have any questions? Um, if not, we'll wrap up. I'm just, I just included a survey. Um, if you wouldn't mind taking a moment, it really helps us plan future classes and events. We really appreciate your feedback. And I'll go ahead and send out a, um, an email to everyone who registered with all these links, just in case you miss anything. Don't worry, we'll get it out to you. All right, well, thank you again. Everyone have a wonderful evening. Thank you.